Welcome to the fourth in our series of recordings about advanced functional presentation, its history, its structure and its use. The previous recordings have moved from the history and theory of AFP onto a practical demonstration of how its structure lends itself to an easy transformation to PDF or other outputs. In particular, we looked at font mapping to standard Adobe fonts. In this recording, I will be taking that transformation and looking how we can provide index information for an archive or document management solution. This could be an in-house developed solution or a content management system from a leading vendor. So here again we've got our credit card, we have our credit card uh, statements and we're going to do some indexing on it. So first thing we want to do is add an index file, which I, I have an output index file and we're going to use an index file, a command file called transform, which is where we put our indexing commands. So we'll add our index file in there. I can of course load in ones that have already been created, but I will just create a new one here. So on the left hand side here, we saw how we can have the AFP structure is presented and we got some no operations, which is additional metadata that we could capture. Uh, here it's just a list of the copyright information. We've got these tagged logical elements, which is the metadata associated with each um, associated with each document. So I will go ahead and identify the account. Now within this product it works on triggers which tell us when and what to, convert, to capture and then fields is the variable information that we actually capture. So I need to create a trigger. We have two different indexing modes, we're just going to use full all points addressable. I need to give the trigger a name see that it's going to capture from your tag logical element and it's going to capture tag logical elements by the name of account. So let's set that up and we'll see on the screen here we've got a little um, a little uh, pin showing that it's fired and the triggers worked and if we can see on the right hand side on the results pane you can see that the trigger account has been fired. Not all these documents are one page long on page 15, we've got the second page of a statement, and here there's, you can see there's no pin, and there's no trigger, because that's the second page of a statement. If I just go back to the first page again, you can see we've got the account and the triggered, and the triggered amount. So that's uh, that's all good debugging on the fly. I will return to the first page. You can set the fields and the triggers up on any page, but typically people set them up on the first page because that's the easiest one. I'm also going to capture the credit limit here. So first off, I need to identify when the credit, credit, limit, credit limit occurs. Well, I know it occurs on the first page of each document. So I'm going to set a trigger here saying first page. And this trigger will file every time it encounters page, encounters page one. I could have just used the account trigger here. Uh, there's a whole number of different ways you can use this and it very much depends upon your document type. You can see you can match the location and you know, various other product features, but uh, here the key thing is I'm just going to match every time I see this value 1. And we see here that you know, on this first page here I've matched the account page and I've matched it on the first page. And if we go to our two page document again, on the second page, you can see I've not matched it because it's the second page of the statement. So I've identified when I'm going to capture information. So I'll now set up what I'm capturing and a variable for it to be stored in. So I'm going to store the TLE into a field. I'll just call it account. Now I'll need to define when I capture it. Well, that's clearly every time I see the trigger for the account so that I can capture it from the tag logical element. I'm just going to capture them all here, there's only one uh, information and I'm capturing the full 11, 
the full 11 characters, and I know that it's EBSDIC text, so it's going to map it to ASCII for me. So that's captured that. I'm going to capture the credit limit. So let's just create a field around the credit limit. So I need to capture it every time I see the first page. It's doing it on the location. It's EBSTIC values. Now, this person has a $16,000 credit limit. Uh, there may be some richer people around with a higher credit limit, so I will just make sure that we capture those extra digits if they exist. And again, here on the right-hand side on the results, you can see what we've captured and the credit limit. And if we scroll through, you can see the values change as they change here. The field is highlighted. The account number is not highlighted because that is being extracted from the TLE, not from the account information on the document. Now, it's not unheard of, especially in legacy archives, for metadata to have evolved over time and differ from what's on the document. So depending upon what you're doing, you might actually want to capture the information from both places and uh, run a compare process as a subsequent step. Okay, so I've captured the information, but I've not actually output it anywhere yet. So next stage we need to do is just add an index of output. So I'm just going to create a nice index, and it's just going to be called account credit. On every page, this is going to write out my account number, a couple of colons as a separator, my credit limit. You will see that you know, there's a whole set of inbuilt variables that could be used, and uh, you can add expressions and things like that if you need to. So that's now indexing my documents, and over here on the index file, we can um, see the uh, result, captured results. And as we just eyeball the line, this one looks a bit odd. Account number 15 only got a credit limit of space space zero. So we will go and take a quick look at that in case something's gone wrong. Okay, here we see account number 15. Oh. It actually does have a credit limit of zero, and there are some leading spaces that we've captured. So rather than having too long a field, we've got too short a field. So one of the common features that is available is if we just go back in here and edit it, we can trim the spaces off the front and the back just to capture the numeric, numeric value. It's one of the many functions that are available in these sorts of products. And that goes away. And re-indexes it for us and we can now see that our index output file index.csv contains 0.00, .00 without any trailing or leading or leading spaces. So that's how you create a simple index file. Clearly there's lots of information that could be captured. You may want to output it into an XML file. Uh, you may want to output it to a standard CSV file. All the products allow you to do these various mappings. So just a couple of take takeaways. The metadata is much simpler to extract. It's generally more reliable because although it may have involved, that's probably because of business processes uh, putting additional notes and corrections in there. And you know you may need to prove your index. You know, if the data that you are reading is wrong and the credit limit on that document is wrong, you will extract the incorrect information, although your process will have been perfect. So when you are setting these jobs up, be prepared to prove your index uh, and set up the appropriate audit trials and extraction files and debugs so that you can demonstrate to auditors, to your business users, that you are extracting what is on the document, which may of course not be what they were expecting. So I hope you found that useful and have, are enjoying this um, series of recordings. The next articles and recordings will look at the techniques for the storing of the AFP in a space efficient manner and easy to retrieve in various document archives. 
So thank you for your time. As a footnote, I was using Crawford Technologies Pro Designer product during this recording. It combines advanced AFP viewing technologies with transform design and indexing capability. If you require more information or a more detailed demonstration, then please do not hesitate to contact us.